Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the uh, Contemplative Light in the Darkness Eucharist. Welcome to online worship. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you and also with you let us pray holy wisdom in your loving kindness you created and restored us when we were lost inspire us with your truth that we may love you with our whole minds and run to you with open hearts through Christ our Lord amen, amen. a reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians my brothers and sisters whom I love and long for my joy and my crown Stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord, yes? And I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Declare the mighty acts of God our Savior. Declare the mighty acts of God our Savior. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord? Or show forth all his praise? Declare the mighty acts of God our Savior. Happy are those who act with justice and always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people and visit me with your saving help that I may see the prosperity of your elect and be glad with the gladness of your people, that I may glory with your inheritance. Declare the mighty acts of God our Savior. We have sinned as our forebears did, We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. Israel made a bull calf at Horeb and worshipped a molten image. And so they exchanged their glory for the image of an ox that feeds on grass. Declare the mighty acts of God our Savior. They forgot God their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt, wonderful deeds in the land of Ham, and fearful things at the Red Sea. So he would have destroyed them, had not Moses his chosen stood before him in the breach, to turn away his wrath from consuming them. Declare the mighty acts of God our Saviour.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they had found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the utter darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So the practice of Lexio Divina, sacred reading, is an ancient practice going back to the the earliest days of the church and probably even predates it as there's a very similar practice in the Jewish tradition called Haggadah. Uh, But it's a way of praying scripture not so much to glean information, uh, little factoids about Jesus, uh, but for formation that is to be shaped into the one we follow after and call Lord, that we might live our lives in such a way, conduct ourselves uh, in such a way that we come to resemble ever more closely uh, the person of Jesus. And with Lexio Divina, we listen with a different part of our being, not so much the top couple centimeters of our brain, but with the ear of the heart, as uh, St. Benedict calls it. Uh, And so what I'll do is read through our passage today uh, four times. And the basic orientation here is that you're listening as if This scripture were a love letter written directly to you. Scripture, as we know, is living and active, and it speaks to each one of us right here and right now uh, in our unrepeatable uniqueness with a word of comfort, a word of challenge. And it's our job to be open and receptive to what the Spirit is saying to us. The person of Mary, I think, kneeling at the feet of Jesus with her open, receptive, surrendered attention, paying attention to the one thing necessary, listening to Jesus. Uh, She is our icon for the practice of Lexio Divina. Too often we're like her sister, Mary, rushing about, grumbling about having to do all the housework, too distracted by our busyness to see the gift that is always on offer. So this first time through, listen for a word, phrase, or image that the Spirit lays on your heart. And then the practice, a very simple practice, is to turn that word over in your heart, like a cow chewing its cud, as the desert fathers and mothers say. Um, We're not so much reflecting on the word, analyzing it, but just spending time being with uh, that word, phrase, or image, getting a, a sense of its savor. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The second moment or movement of Lectio Divina is called meditatio, or uh, reflecting. So first we read, and now we reflect. And this is where we ponder in our hearts, like Mary, what it is this word, phrase, or image has to say to us right here and right now. I often think of this movement of Lexio Divina as presenting us with a kind of doorway. And the question I ask myself is, what new way of seeing and being in the world? What kind of uh, cleansed perception am I being asked to step into, embody, and enact in my life? And conversely, what old, deeply patterned, mechanical, repetitive, way of seeing and being in the world, am I being gently prodded to let go of, to release, to surrender, to repent of? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Often when we're praying in this way, we find ourselves kind of spontaneously moved to offer up some kind of prayer that captures our engagement with this word, phrase, or image, a prayer of thanksgiving, a prayer of praise, a prayer of intercession or petition. And so this third movement, oratio, or prayer, is where we find ourselves responding to the gift that we've received in the, in the Word. So we read, we reflect, and now we're called to respond, just as in our lives we hear the good news and then are asked to carry it forth to others. And so in simple language spoken from the heart, we offer up some kind of prayer, either silently or aloud, that captures our engagement with this word, phrase, or image 
doesn't need to be fancy or sound like Thomas Cramer's beautiful prose from the 1549 prayer book. Uh, probably best to picture ourselves sitting in the early dawn light at the kitchen table, sharing a cup of coffee with someone who loves us unconditionally and is inordinately interested in what we have to say, which is the proper situation of all prayer, of course. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ. The final movement or moment of Lexio Divina is called contemplatio or contemplation or what Gregory the Great calls resting in God. So we read, we reflect, we respond, and now we're invited to rest. And this is where we lay aside our prayers. We lay aside the machinations of our intellect, our reflections. And we allow ourselves uh, simply to be, to be present to the presence that is always with and ahead and for us. And uh, to facilitate this, we use that word, phrase, or image really as a symbol of our intent to open, to consent to God's presence and action in our lives, uh, to surrender to God, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when we find ourselves pre-living our lives and thinking about the future or reliving our lives and mulling over the past, we use that word, phrase, or image as a symbol of our intent to see the thought, to gently release it, and to come home, to come back. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.
when we have the gift, the precious opportunity of being able to gather together in in-person worship, we take a few moments before we move to the prayers of the people to engage in some faith sharing. And we share with the group what word, phrase, or image the Spirit laid on our heart, how we were reflecting on its meaning uh, for our lives right here and right now, how we might resolve to do something different when we leave this place and in the week ahead, uh, and perhaps even what prayer we offered up. So if you're praying this at home with a couple other people, uh, I encourage you now to take a few moments to engage in a similar kind of faith, faith sharing. And even if you're praying by yourself, uh, grab a piece of paper or journal and a pen and jot down some of the reflections or the prayer that was moving through you uh, in this time of Lexio Divina. And perhaps every couple of days over the course of the week, return to that as a way to kind of renew your intention to be open to what the Spirit is uh, calling you to do. peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. 
You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. The night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now, gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your Spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary all you, and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will, will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though your people cannot consume these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that they have received the forgiveness of sins and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your desire and be renewed for your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. praying together the post-communion prayer on page 13. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in the world in the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen.
Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.